Hey, what's up, BCC? I'm Pastor Aaron. Hey, good morning. I'm Pastor Mark. It's great to be with you today, and uh, we're going to Sunday rewind this thing a little bit. Yeah, and, man. And, uh, man, we had a great day yesterday, uh, just like every week. I feel like we say that every week, but that's because I feel that every week. So, uh, anyways, we had I a great... I love church, man. That's right. I love getting together with God's that's people. Right. You know, so. my son is a church junkie right now, so, oh, like, yeah. he's, like, he's digging Bentonville Community Church, and that's... Yeah. Hey, I couldn't be more grateful. Yeah, like, my, gonna, my kids are too. If he's going to dig somewhere, like that's, that's the place I hope he mm -hmm. focuses his energy. And we hope you focus your energy that way as well. <laughs> so uh, we're going to just jump in and dig into the sermon a little bit. Uh, we started a new sermon series last week. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, this week was a continuation of that. You can see our green background here uh, yesterday, as you probably know by this point. If you don't know, uh, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. Right. And, and I did not wear green. Uh, I had a green sh like green stripe on my shirt. That was about all oh, okay. I could claim. So. So. Uh, but anyways, we, we, we just continued this sermon series as we continue walking to the cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, we, Jesus, like, he's kind of more of a controversial figure than, whenever, than what we'd like to give him credit very for. Very much so. Very much. And I'll just let everybody know. So what I committed to do for the season of Lent was to preach through lectionary texts. Mm. So if you're not familiar with the lectionary, there's a three-year cycle of texts uh, that the church uses or has historically used. Um, and and uh, I don't always preach from the lectionary text, but this year I decided I'm going to sort of lean into this hundreds and hundreds of year old tradition yeah. of preaching these certain texts in this particular year. Uh, and so I said, you know what, I, I'm going to, the church has said these are texts that we need to hear from. And, and I'm going to take this season of Lent and during Lent preach those lectionary texts. Mm. So I'll be honest with you, I would not normally go to Luke 13. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it's the last story in Luke 13 um, where, where Jesus has a confrontation uh, with uh, Herod, essentially. Uh, and he calls Herod a fox. Woo. Yeah. And Look out now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But Which he's... doesn't even fall in your top five. Of, of names that of Jesus, names called, that Jesus people. called people. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, so I, I sort of made a list of names that Jesus called people in power. It's important to underscore that. Uh, he wasn't like bullying people that didn't have power, <laughs> right. but he, there were people in power, uh, particularly the religious establishment. Mm -hmm. So he had some names for them. So he confronted them. He called them a brood of vipers, mm. which I think he stole this from his cousin. I think John the Baptist was I, the first person. Probably so. That yeah. sounds right for John. Uh, brood of vipers, hypocrites, uh, blind fools. Um, man, I had one more because I, before my favorite. Uh, hypocrites, blind fools, brood of vipers. Um, anyway, there's one more. And then... He really gets in their kitchen. He's like, children of Satan. Yeesh. Yeah. 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 So. How would you like, how would you like Jesus to call you children of Satan? <laughs> At that point, you need to make some correction right. in your life. That's yeah. right. But he calls Herod a fox. Herod a fox. And, and so, you know, I mean, that, that's, you know, this is a, this is one of those texts that you kind of wrestle with. Like, mm -hmm. like Jesus isn't really. Maybe who I thought he was, like, all the way. He's, Jesus is not the, the, what he is gentle and he is kind. Yeah. His yoke is easy. But there's also a side of him that looks at injustice, mm -hmm. that looks at people who, who propagate um, uh, sin and the further degradation of the world and injustice. And he looks at those people and he confronts them. And he says, no, this is not how the world is supposed to be. The Father has sent me on a mission to redeem the world and put the world back together. And I'm going to do that through my life, death, and resurrection. And so he calls out power and invites them to be part of the kingdom. But for them to be part of the kingdom, they're going to have to follow Jesus' example and lay down their power and not use coercive power. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's essentially what's going on there as he, as he calls out Herod. It's pretty um, awesome. Pretty so awesome. It's, it's a discharge of... Jesus's prophetic office yeah. to speak truth to power. And he stands in the tradition of Elijah. He stands in the tradition of Nathan that confronted King David and these prophets that came before him that boldly spoke truth to power. Um, and, and I think one of the things that you mentioned yesterday too in your sermon was that we, I think a lot of times we hear the word prophet mm -hmm. and we think that that's like a, somebody who tells the future. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's not necessarily always true. I mean, that, that's, Maybe part, part of the of, prophetic witness right. in Scripture, but primarily 
the prophets are helping us understand the present. Yeah. Like this is what God thinks of injustice right now. This is what God thinks of your sin. This mm -hmm. is what God thinks of how you're living out of fellowship with him. And so prophets can get And by the way, Jesus did service. both. Like he did both. He did both. I mean, mm -hmm. he foretells his his death and resurrection true multiple times uh, mm -hmm. to to his followers. And so you know, yesterday was one of those times where um, you're right. It's not. It's not the passage of scripture that's like our go-to. Like right. it's not. You know, we don't go to that one. We don't make memes about Luke 13. Right. Right. Put them on but but one of the things I love about Jesus, uh, a lot of things about Jesus that I love, <laughs> <laughs> but but one of the things I love is the tension that he holds between grace and truth because mm. he uses this truth and he calls he calls power out. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he he wants to confront power with the truth, but then he also has this thing where he offers grace. To people mm -hmm. and to those who who have lived in sin, and he holds this mm. tension so perfectly. Yeah, it's and it's amazing. Grace and truth. Yeah, and you have to have both. You, you know, if right. you if he came just just with truth and just he's always just laying down truth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's not really hope in that. Right. 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 Um, but but he comes and he and he, he he lays down truth, but he offers grace. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. so with that, he brings he brings hope to people as well. And that is ultimately how he redeems the world yeah through this dual message of grace this complete gospel of grace and truth it's amazing yeah it's amazing hey tell us about this hat man Before hey so further. yeah absolutely. Let, let everybody see this hat so i don't know if you can see it or not this is uh this is a new minor league team out of my hometown amarillo texas their first season is this year and uh in the tradition of minor league baseball team names it's absolutely ridiculous okay so this is the amarillo Sod poodles. Sod poodles. Sod poodles, right there. Yep. So if you don't know what a sod poodle is, it is a prairie dog. That's what it is. So uh, it comes from comes from the frontier days. Sod and poodle is much more fun to say. Most people in Amarillo had no idea what a sod poodle was <laughs> until the team came around. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It's baseball season's gearing up. Woo. I was in Phoenix a couple weeks ago getting ready for NYC, and yeah. uh, man, I, I missed out on being able to go to a minor league or minor league, a, uh, a spring, spring ball game. game. Uh, there's a nice. bunch of them going around, going on around there, but. Yeah. Uh, Literally my favorite time of year. We've got the NCAA tournament. Yep. We've got the beginning of baseball. We've got the master's tournament coming up. Yep. And we're also approaching Easter. Absolutely. And by the way, if you don't know, we're doing two services for Easter. Yeah. We went from sod poodles right into Easter. Do you like that? How, do, how do we do that? You know, that's talent, man. That's talent. Talent. That's. <laughs> Pastoral, it's all of those things. Uh, just so, into one. April 21st, Easter weekend here at Bentonville Community Church. Two services to choose from. Go ahead and put them on your calendar 9 a.m. and 10:45. Grace and truth. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, the services will have both of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, the not, grace <laughs> is not at 9, the truth is at 10:45. Grace and truth in both. In both, in both. They're, they're <laughs> identical services. Uh, but no, we're looking forward to Easter weekend. Mm. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we love Easter, um, and we love to celebrate uh, what God uh, did through his son, Jesus Christ. Mm. And we want you to be a part of that celebration with us. So come check those out. Make sure you make note of those service times. And uh, we're going to come and celebrate and have a party. So Absolutely. it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Hey, uh, there's, there's other things going on in the life of our church as well. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things that's happened over the last couple weeks is we started a new life group here at church. Um, and uh, man, I've, it's been awesome to walk down the hall and see them meeting. Um, and uh, it's led by Adam and Kelsey Comer and Aaron and Kevin Moore. And I tell you what, they're just like, they're knocking, they're awesome people in, mm. to begin with, but just knocking it out of the park. I'm excited about what God's doing. Yeah. Um, so if you are a, a, mid 20 something to mid 30 something and young kids young kids trying to figure that whole trying to thing figure out. that out 9 30 on sunday mornings they're meeting in the legacy room which is the big glassed in room at the end of the hall behind the sanctuary so uh it man i tell you what i'm excited about what that group is doing and the I way it's, it's headed so i am too um also if you're new to our congregation and you want to find out more about what we're all about I'm having um, a kickstart class that starts uh, March 31st, and it's a two-week uh, experience. Um, uh, sorry, it doesn't go for two weeks. It's <laughs> it's uh, two at, sessions. Two sessions. Two sessions after church, March 31st and April 6th. We'll have lunch in the cafe together. There'll be childcare. 
And I hope you'll join us and learn more about our congregation, what we're about, our mission, our values, and how you can get plugged into that. So it's Kickstart beginning March 31st. So in case you didn't know this, we made a video for Kickstart a few years ago. <laughs> we're going behind the scenes here. So you're okay? getting a little, a little peek behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. But so we made a video for a Kickstart a few years ago. And we, we do Kickstart different ways at different times. Mm -hmm. Just depends kind of on the time of year, what's happening. And so... There's like, I don't know how many versions. There's probably 10 versions of this video out there. Four Wednesday nights? There's like four Wednesday nights. There's four Sunday mornings. There's two Sunday afternoons. There's four Sunday afternoons. <laughs> there's two Wednesday nights. There's all kinds of formats of this video <laughs> out there. And so uh, a shout out to Pastor Mal for putting that together for us. Yep. And uh, having to revamp it now because we're in a new space with right. new things going on. And so... Uh, yeah, we, we had to rework that video, but it's always fun. Yeah. So just a little Some, peek behind the curtain. Someday we'll release the blooper reel of, <laughs> of that. Well, uh, you should have heard sweet. me. So, so I'm doing the voiceover on the video in case you didn't know. So, uh, so I'm doing the, I'm reading the piece of paper for where it has everything lined out and I get to the point where we're do, we're recording all the different options. Right. Mm -hmm. And I get there and, and you're reading and you're going along and all of a sudden you get to all these different lines and you're like, in two sessions on Sunday afternoon, in four sessions on Sunday morning. Yeah, like it's just like one after the other. Anyways, one day maybe you'll hear all that. Uh, but we're excited about Kickstart, and we want you to get connected to Community Church. We want you to get connected to what God's doing here mm. and uh, learn more about what we're about. So yep. looking forward to Kickstart on March 31st and April 7th. Mm. Um, awesome. Last thing. Yeah. Uh, so I... I had the opportunity to announce a partnership that we have entered into with Soco Church of Northwest Arkansas. So they're a brand new church. They're one of the fastest growing churches in America, literally. Mm -hmm. They've been in existence for about 14 months. And so they've outgrown their space at the record and they approached us about having church here on Saturday nights. Most Saturday nights, this building is not being used. And so we saw it as an opportunity for them to add another service and for Christ to be exalted yeah. and we're excited about partnering with SoCo to see lives transformed here in Northwest Arkansas. So keep that partnership in your prayers. We're Absolutely. excited about it. And their mission and values line up with ours and that's that's Very what makes similar. it so awesome is that mm -hmm. you know we believe that that all ships rise is, is the phraseology that you mm -hmm. used yesterday that that when Christ is exalted and when his name is lifted high that all ships rise and mm -hmm. so uh, we're excited to enter into this partnership with them and um, you know, we, we're just, we're just excited about what God's doing through them yeah. uh, and through us as well. And, and, you know, Hey, if we can be a help to, to another church in our community, Absolutely. um, that's proclaim, proclaiming the name of Christ, then, uh, why not jump at that opportunity? Right. So. Right. Uh, and this was with a lot of prayer and a lot of consultation with our staff. Uh, primarily it affects our youth programming and our children's programming, but we looked at our calendar, looked at the events we wanted to do. There's a few conflicts, and SoCo's gonna work with us on that, but primarily, if we're just creative with our programming and how we schedule things, we can make it work. Yeah. And so, if you can make it work, why not? It'll be a win-win for everybody. That's right, that's right. Well, we hope you have a great week, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back here on Sunday. There's no Wednesday programming this, this Wednesday night uh, for spring break, uh, but next Sunday morning, we look forward to seeing you back. And uh, we hope you have a great spring break. If you're off, if you're not off, then we still hope you have a great week anyway. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Take care.